It's staring at you, and you're staring at it. A giant eye that seems to be pulling you into an abyss. You're hovering over it in your space copter. But however scared you might be, you still need to do your job. So you send your copter down to the surface of the red planet. Right, that's where you are, on Mars. But first things first, you take a moment to remember everything you know about the fourth planet from the Sun. It's the last of the inner planets. Those are the planets that lie within the asteroid belt. They're also called terrestrial, since they're made up of rocks and metals. The atmosphere of Mars is much thinner than Earth's. It contains 95% carbon dioxide and a mere 1% of oxygen. In other words, don't even think about pulling off your helmet. Anyway, there's no time to waste. You land on the surface of the planet and find yourself in a brownish-red world. That's a good thing you're wearing a spacesuit. This place is freezing cold. The thermometer sewn into the sleeve of your suit shows minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to take your first step on the Martian surface. The planet looks quite colorful, and the hue of a particular area depends on the minerals that make up the soil. The ground under your feet is covered in fine dust. It looks like rust. The same orange dust is in the air. Good thing you have your own supply of oxygen and don't need to breathe Martian air. The layer of this dust covering the surface of Mars can be from 6 to 40 feet thick. You hope you'll avoid getting swallowed by some Martian quicksand. You start walking, feeling very light. Mars is just 15% of our planet's volume and a mere 11% of Earth's mass. It means that gravity here is much weaker. Its pull is 38% as strong as the pull of gravity on the surface of Earth. You jump up and down and then try to run several hundred feet. Ha! Ah, you haven't even broken a sweat. What makes it harder for you to explore the place on foot is that the planet's surface is rocky, covered with craters and volcanoes, old dry lake beds, and canyons. You see something huge towering on the horizon, but you try to suppress your curiosity. You'll have enough time to figure out what it is later. Suddenly, a massive cloud appears in the distance. It looks as if a huge herd of horses is approaching you. In reality, you better get back into your copter and fly away as fast as you can. That's one of Mars's infamous dust storms. They mostly occur during the summer in the southern hemisphere of the red planet. They can sometimes cover the entire planet. And you see the largest ones from Earth. You hop into your copter and set a course for the eye that scared you so much. Winding channels that look like veins run through the eyeball. But the closer you get, the less it looks like an actual eye. Soon you realize it's a crater. It's giant, almost 19 miles across. Around the crater, which looks as if it has a pupil, there are other even bigger craters. They likely formed billions of years ago. That's when Mars had to withstand multiple attacks of space rocks. But why is the eye crater darker than the surrounding landscape? Scientists think that once, there was Martian water in the enormous pit. Remember those channels? They were likely carrying that water. And since the crater was filled with water, it stopped some substances and minerals from eroding away. Now, remember that towering something on the horizon? It's time to go and explore it. When you come close, you realize it's the largest shield volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. It's more than 370 miles in diameter, which is almost the same size as the state of Arizona. You tilt your head. Wow! The mountain is 16 miles high. It's also rimmed by 4-mile-high cliffs. To picture the sheer size of the volcano, let's make some comparisons. The largest volcano on Earth is Mauna Loa, towering around 2.5 miles above sea level and stretching 75 miles across. Sounds impressive. But the volume of Olympus Mons is around 100 times larger than that of Mauna Loa. The Martian giant could swallow the whole chain of Hawaiian islands from Kauai to Hawaii. But why is this volcano so large? It might be the result of lower surface gravity and higher eruption rates. Or the reason might be the red planet's crust, which is very different from Earth's. It's static. You see, on our planet, the crust is made of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. As plates move over hot spots producing lava, new volcanoes form, and the already existing ones become extinct. That's why lava can get to the surface through many vents. 
But on Mars, the crust isn't broken into the same tectonic plates as on Earth. And the lava has nothing to do but pile in one very, very large volcano. So how about getting closer to the enormous mountain? But once you step out of your copter on Martian soil, the ground under your feet starts shaking. Well, that's a Mars quake. But how can it happen if Mars doesn't have any actively shifting tectonic plates? Specialists from NASA are sure Mars quakes occur when energy inside the planet gets suddenly released. It leads to rock fractures and cracks in the planet's crust. Another powerful jolt, and one of such cracks opens right next to you. You fall to the ground, afraid to move. But soon, everything calms down. You wait for a couple of minutes, just to be sure, and get up. Oh look! Here's a perfect opportunity to explore the insides of the red planet. The crack is large enough to send a special research robot. The planet's crust is thin and consists of volcanic basalt rock. The mantle that surrounds the core of the planet is made up of thick silicates, oxygen, and some minerals. You can probably compare it with soft, rocky toothpaste. Mars's mantle is also much thinner than Earth's. It's just 800 to 1100 miles thick. As for the planet's core, it's made mostly of iron, nickel, and sulfur and is between 900 and 1200 miles wide. This core doesn't move. That's why Mars doesn't have a planet-wide magnetic field. Unfortunately, your drone is now lost in the depths of the red planet. You leave it there and continue your exploration. Your next destination is Valles Marineris. It sounds more like an Italian red sauce, but it's actually an enormous canyon or rather a canyon system that runs along Mars's equator. It's as awe-inspiring as Olympus Mons, more than 2,600 miles long and over 4 miles deep. The thing is so huge, it could span the entire continental United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's make another comparison. One of the most famous canyons on Earth is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. But it's 10 times shorter and around 4 times less deep than this canyon on Mars. Some scientists think that Valles Marineris is the edge of an enormous tectonic plate. It moves so slowly that almost nothing has happened in that region over millions of years. And the movement of this plate probably began 3.5 billion years ago. Anyway, the only thing left on your today's to-do list is to visit Mars's moons. They're among the tiniest in the solar system. Phobos is the largest of the two. It orbits a mere 3,700 miles above the surface of Mars. There's no other known moon that travels closer to its mother planet. It whips around the red planet three times a day, while the second moon, Deimos, needs 30 hours to complete one orbit. Phobos is getting closer and closer to Mars, about 6 feet each 100 years. Within the next 50 million years, it'll either crash into the planet or break apart and form a ring. Happy but tired, you return to your spaceship. Tomorrow, you'll continue exploring the magnificent red planet. And who knows what discoveries are awaiting you. Imagine working seven days a week on a large-scale construction site. You, along with thousands of others, carry millions of stone blocks and put them on top of each other according to a complex system. You work without modern construction equipment. You have no air conditioning or constant access to water. It's so hot outside that you can fry eggs on the road. You've been building the pyramid for decades. And now, when it's finally done, you enjoy the result of the colossal work of thousands of people. You're looking at a giant cultural monument of global value that will freeze in time and amaze people for tens of thousands of years. A few thousand years have passed. People in the 21st century see the pyramids and are like, wow, I can't believe humans have built this. Yeah, the people who built the pyramids wouldn't have appreciated such a theory. But actually, there are reasons to believe that people built it using some fantastic technology. From the outside, it seems the Great Pyramids are just big triangles of stone. People just put some heavy blocks on top of each other, and that's it. In fact, the design seems too perfect to be true. The pyramid consists of more than 2 million blocks. They lay so close to each other and are so even that you couldn't squeeze even a thin sheet of paper between them. 
Scientists still can't figure out the exact technology for building the Egyptian pyramids. One of the biggest and most famous is the Great Pyramid of Giza. This huge construction, well known all over the world, has one big secret. There should be a capstone on top of the pyramid. It's a triangular shaped stone block, a small pyramid on top of a huge one. It's also called a pyramidion. The builders of ancient Egypt made it out of granite and limestone and covered it with gold. No records or old drawings prove that there was a pyramidion at the top of the Great Pyramid of Giza. But there's another ancient Egyptian structure with such a triangle, the Red Pyramid. It was built before the Great One, and its capstone has survived to this day. Archaeologists have found and reconstructed it. But where could the capstone of the Great Pyramid be? It's a mystery that still has no answer. Some are sure that some thieves have stolen it from the top. Maybe they just climbed up and pushed the Pyramidion down. It makes perfect sense. The capstone was probably the most valuable element of the pyramid. Many scientists and archaeologists still don't know its exact purpose. Some believe that this peak covered with gold glorified the pharaohs. The capstone reflected moonlight at night and illuminated the entire space around it. During the day, the capstone reflected sunlight with its shiny surface. You could have noticed it from afar. The top of the pyramid was a kind of guiding star for lost travelers. All other stone blocks of the pyramid consist of limestone. People polish them to make them look shiny. In the past, they were even glowing and reflected light. You could see glowing pyramids from space, although they looked like tiny lights. Over thousands of years, winds, sandstorms, and rains have changed the pyramid's appearance. If people had taken care of them all this time, they would have looked like something out of science fiction movies or the pyramids from Las Vegas. But unfortunately, we will never see their original appearance. Some archaeologists and scientists believe that the capstone could absorb the sun's energy and distribute it evenly throughout the pyramid. No one knows precisely why the Egyptians needed this technology. There's a theory the pyramids are ancient energy systems. The pharaohs applied this energy to use some unique technologies that were more advanced than all the achievements of the 21st century. And the triangular shape of the pyramids was ideal for boosting this electromagnetic energy. In theory, solar radiation, or electromagnetic forces, accumulated at the top of the pyramid, filled the inner rooms, and then went down the walls to the base. Any surface distortion could prevent the flow from spreading, so they had to create a perfectly smooth surface. That's why they installed the blocks so that nobody could squeeze a needle or razor blade between them. Many people believe in this theory because they built the pyramids from limestone. This material can hold energy inside itself. In the inner part, they created granite deposits to cause air ionization, that is, to create an electric charge. They also dug channels under the pyramid for water to transmit electricity. And at the top, they put a gold capstone, the best conductor of electricity. So this is how you get a great power generator. Different cultures used similar technologies to create electricity all over the world. But these are all theories. If it had been working, humanity would have used these technologies today. There are mentions of the metal industry, chemistry, engineering, physics, mathematics, and astronomy in some ancient records. Most scientists don't believe in all these things. We know the detailed stages of the technology's development in different cultures. In the 21st century, scientists, historians, and anthropologists can track the evolution of all modern devices. If people had created some technological inventions in ancient times, the history of the world would have looked different. Perhaps all the achievements of antiquity could have been wiped off the face of the earth by global cataclysms. And it can happen to us. Just imagine how people would dig up a laptop in 5,000 years. Perhaps they wouldn't understand what kind of device it is. 
Another Egyptian wonder surrounded by mystery is the statue of the Sphinx. The Egyptians carved it out of a single massive piece of limestone about 4.5 thousand years ago. But scientists still don't know the exact date of its construction or who built it. People painted the Sphinx in different colors, so it looked much brighter and more vivid in the distant past. It was shining just like the Great Pyramids. Anyway, time hasn't only changed its appearance, but its name too. Initially, the Egyptians called it Horemeket. The Greeks renamed it the Sphinx about a few hundred years after it had been built. The Sphinx emphasized the greatness of the rulers of Egypt. It also performed a symbolic function of a watchdog guarding the tomb of the pharaoh and the paths leading to it. This version sounds realistic, since archaeologists have discovered many secret entrances at the foot of the Sphinx. Perhaps these rooms and intricate tunnels lead to underground halls with treasures. And treasures don't always mean gold and jewelry. According to legends and theories, the Sphinx guards the Hall of Records, the storage of all humankind's knowledge. The information about the ancient mythical state of Atlantis could be there. You can find many detailed maps of the internal dungeons of the Sphinx on the internet. They show structures 12 stories deep under the statue. It looks like a small city filled with gold, scrolls of knowledge, and various ancient artifacts. But don't believe all these maps. These are just theories. Several thousand years have passed, but people have very little information about it. Archaeologists know that there are still many strange and exciting things about the Sphinx that are still undiscovered. Some locals are afraid to research because they believe they can awaken something terrible from the underground depths. Therefore, it's mostly scientists from other countries who conduct the excavations. In 1998, scientists discovered strange tunnels leading to empty rooms under the Sphinx. They realized that some people tried to get there through tunnels in the past. And maybe those people took all the treasures that were there. One of the legends says that some powerful artifact lays beneath the Sphinx. Its technology can change the whole world, but the locals are hiding it because it can damage the planet. Some believe that you can find evidence of unknown technologies painted on the granite walls in the pharaoh's tombs. But most likely, these paintings and signs tell us the myths and legends of ancient Egypt. But what if Egyptian symbols and drawings are detailed instructions for using ancient technologies? What if the locals that lived at that time thought, hmm, people in the future won't be able to get energy themselves? Let's leave some detailed instructions for them. Anyway, there are many riddles and theories. In reality, the search for answers is a dangerous undertaking, since it's not easy to get into the underground halls. Excavations can ruin the structure of the entire Sphinx. Any person inside the tunnels may get lost and never be able to find their way back. Besides, it costs a lot of money. Now what would be awesome is if people could invent some device that could scan underground areas and show their detailed models. A lot of weird incidents have happened in the mysterious valley of Haizu ever since the 1950s. People even started comparing it to the infamous Bermuda Triangle. But are they really that similar? It all started when an airplane went missing here under circumstances no one can explain yet. They searched the location back and forth, but nothing appeared to have remained of the aircraft. And guess what? No one received any SOS messages from the team on board. And to top it off, the same year, a considerable number of tourists and local residents were lost here in the valley, never to be seen again. Speaking of the Bermuda Triangle, one can link its origin story to a series of mysterious disappearances of ships and aircraft. Like the one that happened in 1945, when five planes and 14 people on board went missing in this location while doing routine training exercises. Even a thorough investigation didn't help to establish the cause of the incident. But that wasn't the end. Between 1945 and the mid-1980s, another 25 small planes went missing while going through the Bermuda Triangle, never to be seen again. And the search parties haven't recovered a single piece of these aircraft. 
The Bermuda Triangle isn't the only stretch of water that has claimed ships for good. In the Pacific Ocean, near Japan, there's a tricky portion of water that has earned the nickname the Devil's Sea. The best known out of all of these disappearances is that of a fishery patrol vessel that went missing in 1953. On board were 31 crew members and scientists who were looking to investigate a recently formed volcanic island. What happened to the ship and all the people on board? We'll never know, I guess, since they never found the ship or the crew members, and there was literally no trace of them left behind. Back in 1911, a standard train was scheduled to depart from a railway station in Rome, hoping to reach the city of Milan. Needless to say, none of the 106 passengers ever made it to the destination, and no one has ever seen them again. What happened to these people and to their train? Were they really lost forever? Some people seem to believe this isn't the case. As it was completing its journey, the train was supposed to pass through a long tunnel. It did enter it, but never came out the other end of the tunnel. Nothing was left of the train, and it seemed like it literally just vanished into thin air. Only two of the passengers were found, but they were quite unwell at the time, and their stories did not seem to make much sense. They spoke of a dense fog that they simply jumped out of because they got so scared. Fifteen years later, a story spread about a group of 104 Italian people that popped up in Mexico City, claiming they had arrived by train from Rome. If that's not weird enough, the story appears to have been reported back in 1845. 66 years before the train even departed in the first place. Of course, nobody at the time actually took these people seriously. But you can't help but wonder, did they actually time travel via the Roman tunnel? Or is it just another urban myth? What do you think? The Lost Colony is the story of a strange phenomenon that happened back in the late 1500s. A group of people from England had moved into a colony on Roanoke Island off the coast of present-day North Carolina. But they soon realized they didn't have enough supplies. To fix this, the colony's governor decided to head back to England to get some. He didn't manage to come back for another three years. When he finally did, he was astonished at what was left behind. Nothing. The entire population of the colony was gone. The only reminder of what had been there was a single word carved into a tree. To this day, nobody knows what might have happened to these people or what the carved word means. A lighthouse without an operator? You might think that can't possibly be true, but hear me out. Located in the northwestern part of Scotland are the Flannan Isles. There's nothing fancy about them since they're nothing more than a bunch of rocks and grass. But there is a famous lighthouse here, hiding a dark secret. In 1900, all three of the lighthouse's keepers mysteriously disappeared, never to be seen again. Ever since, the islands have been completely abandoned. The lighthouse became one of those with an automated system in the 1970s. No list of places where things go missing could be complete without this mysterious forest located in Transylvania, a region in Romania. And no, it has nothing to do with the famous Count Dracula, if that's what you're thinking. It's called the Hoya Forest, and it's a place that has seen quite its share of unusual phenomena. Not only do people go missing here, but others have experienced all sorts of weird noises, from female voices to whispers. Some people claim to have time-traveled between the spooky trees of the Hoya Forest. They say they had literally skipped a few hours before they went back. The Yellowhead Highway is a stretch of road located in British Columbia, Canada. One section of the road has received a lot of attention throughout the years, starting with the 1960s because of some mysterious disappearances. These events have earned it the nickname Highway of Tears. There is no reasonable explanation as to why people keep going missing here. What is more striking is that most of these people were young women. This triangular area that stretches above the desert and the Sierra Nevada mountains in the state of Nevada received quite a bit of attention because of a disappearance that happened back in 2007. A record-setting sailor, aviator, and adventurer named Steve Fawcett flew here in a small plane and then disappeared. They searched for Fawcett intensively for months but didn't find any traces of him or the aircraft. One year later, 
the mystery of Fawcett's fate was finally solved when a hiker came across his ID cards, and later a search party found the plane's wreckage. It's one of the most visited natural resorts in the world, but Yosemite National Park carries some dark secrets of its own. Despite its beauty and abundance of wildlife, a total of 45 people went missing right here in this location. No one knows what happened to them. Hey, maybe we should ask the local bears. They might know something. There are even stories of people that disappeared from one region of the park only to pop up in a completely different location. This hasn't stopped over 3 million people that visit the park each year from wandering around this location, though. Whenever a ship happens to sink, you'd expect to at least find pieces of it on the bottom of the sea, right? Well, not if you're traveling through Lake Superior. It's located along the border of the United States and Canada, and became famous because of the great number of ships that went missing here. It may have something to do with the stormy winds, of course, but that doesn't explain why some ships simply vanish altogether, without a single piece of them ever to be found, not even at the bottom of the lake. It does gather a lot of tourists each year, though. They come here to scuba dive and see the remains of some of the ships that still lie here. The bottom of this lake even contains what's left of the notorious SS Edmund Fitzgerald. Back when it departed on June 7, 1958, it was the largest ship on North America's Great Lakes and, to this day, remains the largest ship ever to have sunk in the area. Similar to other events, the exact cause of the shipwreck remains a mystery.